continuing on with Freemasonry, you were introduced to Albert Pike earlier. Um, now he, you can see him here. He's the 33rd degree. Uh, there is a double-headed eagle. There is his 33rd degree emblem. Uh, he is has a statue in Washington near the Capitol building. So this is a Confederate soldier with a statue in Washington, also KKK member, uh, general. You can see here the emblem of Freemasonry, 33rd degree. So uh, was that revolution or that civil war really a civil war? Uh, he is enshrined here. I know he got pardoned also by a president and now also enshrined or, or tomb, entombed in the Masonic Lodge in Washington, D.C. He wrote a book called Morals and Dogma uh, out by Albert Pike. Shows you a lot of interesting things in there. Okay, every Masonic, they like to claim that that's, they're not a religion, but every Masonic Lodge is a temple of religion. And its teachings are instructions in the universal, eternal, immutable religion. Morals and Dogma of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry by Albert Pike. So that's this book right here. Again, uh, Masonry, the custodian and depository since Enoch of the great philosophical and religious truth unknown to the world at large. All right, so religious. Now, Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give uh, to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning, it is, it is he who bears the light, and with its splendors, intolerable, my, uh, blinds feeble, sensual, or selfish souls, doubt it not. So this reference to Lucifer, the light bearer, and in fact, when you understand who they worship, they worship Lucifer, that light bearer. That is the light that they are seeking. Morals and dogma. Okay, now, General Albert Pike, uh, this is a speech given. That which we must say to the crowd is, we worship a God, but it is the God one adores without superstition. To you, Sovereign Grand Inspectors General, we say this, and you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degrees, the Masonic religion should be by all of us initiates of the high degrees maintained in the purity, purity of the Luciferian doctrine. If Lucifer were not God, it would Adonai, the God of the Christians, whose deeds prove cruelty, perfidy, perfidy, and hatred of man, barbarism, and repulsion for science, would Adonai, his priests, culminate him? Yes, Lucifer is God, and unfortunately, Adonai is also God. For the eternal law is that there is no light with, without shade, no beauty without ugliness, no white without black. For the absolute can only exist as two gods, darkness being necessary for light to serve as its foil, as the pedestal is necessary to the statue and the brake to the locomotive. This is that dualism going on. Now, our Bible states specifically that God is light and there is no darkness in him. So understand what they want to do is merge these together. Thus, the doctrine of Satanism is heresy. So now they're claiming that Satanism is heresy. And the true and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer. They are equal. Uh, in this, I'm going to show you, uh, and we should understand that they are according to the Bible. The equal of Adonai is Lucifer, they say, but Lucifer, God of light and God of good, is struggling for humanity against Adonai, the God of darkness and evil. This opposite understanding. It is very deceptive and very, very, um, I can twist your brain if you try to understand what their doctrine is, but you have to understand it by their deeds as well. Masonry, like all religions, all the mysteries, hermeticism, and alchemy conceals its secret from all except the adepts, the sages, or the elect, and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead those who deserve only to be misled. The blue degrees are but the outer court or portico of the temple. Part of the symbols are displayed there to the initiate, but he is intentionally misled by false interpretations. It is not intended that he shall understand them, but it is intended that he shall imagine he understands them. Their true explication is re reserved for the adepts, the princes of masonry. So you can see this clear deception of early uh, initiates into the degrees. And this, this is lies as far as interpretation. So you must understand the entire doctrine, whether or not you believe this, uh, what they say here. They twist the truth so cleverly and I am going to tell you be aware of this and be aware of what is good and what is evil. All right, The true name of Satan, the Kabbalists say, is that of Yahweh. 
reversed. There is that reversal again. And you understand in Satanism there is a uh, distinction. Now, imagine, this is morals and dogma. For Satan is not a black god. Luf Lucifer, the light bearer. Now, he's equating Lucifer with Satan and saying that Satan is not a black god because Lucifer is the light bearer. Strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Okay, Lucifer, the son of the morning, it is he who bears the light, doubt it not. So you can understand in context of what is said. We said that earlier. Let's move on over here to Manly P. Hall. Manly P. Hall is another Masonic writer. Uh, 33rd degree, you can see that there. Double-headed eagle, same thing. Lost Keys of Freemasonry, you can see by the book covers. Also, it's at the top of the pyramid. This man is now enlightened. He has the enlightenment, the torch of enlightenment, similar to the Statue of Liberty. He has the triangle on his chest, and now he's an enlightened being. The same book using this uh, Eye of Lucifer uh, on the back of the dollar bill. The same book as well with George Washington on the cover showing you that George Washington was the first Mason, most revered Mason for this country and patriarch to this country. He was not a Christian. He was a Luciferian Freemason. Understanding now this is Albert Mackey. He wrote the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry and you can see this woman here in Code Masonry. She puts the hand over the bosom. She points to the book, usually a Bible, and then that Bible has a square and compass. But I'm telling you these are all deceptions. Now, I just want to make things clear. If I say something like, believe me, I, I just want you to understand this is what I'm saying and you are entitled to your own belief. And when I say believe me, I'm, it's just coming from emotion because it's what I've researched. So please bear with me on this. And uh, so I have to go now into, let's look at morals and dogma. No, let's look at this, Manly P. Hall. When the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power. He has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onwards and upwards, he must prove his ability to properly apply this energy. Now, we must understand in Buddhism, they believe that demons, a.k.a. Lucifer and these his fallen angels and demons, help them attain enlightenment. And so in this case, this is what you have in your hands to attain enlightenment. Now, Arthur Edward Waite, uh, The Book of Black Magic, is a 33rd degree Freemason. First conjuration, conjuration addressed to Emperor Lucifer. Emperor Lucifer, master and prince of rebellious spirits. There's that rebellious understanding and that 13, understanding that the number 13 is a number of rebellion. I adjure thee to leave thine abode uh, in whatever quarter of the world uh, it may be situated and come hither to communicate with me. I command and I conjure thee in the name, oh my gosh. How sick can you possibly be? And I don't know. Um, and I don't even want to just actually read that because uh, I'm reading it out loud. What is more absurd and more impious than to attribute the name of Lucifer to the devil is that uh, that is to personified evil. The intellectual Lucifer is the spirit of intelligence and love. It is the practice. It is the Holy Spirit, while the physical Lucifer is the great agent of universal magnetism. Alphas Levi. And he's the guy that showed you the Baphomet uh, image. So, boy, they really have a twisted way of putting this. And you think it's uh, just spiritism and mysticism. But it is an entity, Lucifer, that the Bible describes that is our adversary and is out to destroy us. And we have, a, uh, in my belief system, um, I can understand, we can understand that Jesus is saying that there is a hell and that there is a heaven and he doesn't want you to go to go to the wrong place. Satanic ritual is a blend of Gnostic, Kabbalistic, Hermetic, and Masonic elements incorporating nomenclature and vibratory words of power from ev virtually every mythos. Masonic orders have contained the most influential men in many governments, and virtually every occult order has many Masonic roots. Anton LaVey, that's that renowned Satanist. So you can understand Masonic orders containing influential men in many governments. Now, one thing I want to show you here is look at the deception going on. Part of the symbols are displayed there to the initiate. Okay, so he's intentionally misled. misled. We read that uh, in the upper portion. There is, must always be a commonplace interpretation 
for the mass of initiates, of the symbols that are eloquent to the adepts. So they're showing you that the upper levels get the true meaning, and once you get to the highest level, you understand that it is Lucifer that you're worshipping. You must conceal all the crimes of your brother Masons, except murder and treason, and these only at your own option. So they're showing you that you have to be immoral, uh, and that you should hide your brother uh, from even those types of crimes. And should you be summoned as a witness against a brother mason, be always sure to shield him. So you have to shield him from crime. Uh, uh, prev prevaricate or falsify. Uh, don't tell the whole truth in, the, in his case. Keep his secrets. Forget uh, the most important uh, points it may be perjury to do this, it is true, but you're keeping your obligations. And remember, if you live up to your obligations strictly, you'll be free from sin. How absolutely deceptive is that? I'll tell you what, if you want power and money and all of those things, go ahead. Practice those things and you'll get it because you can take advantage of others easily that way without any conscience. Now, moving on to the double-headed eagle. Um, we have the double-headed eagle here. Now you can read this on your own, but when we get to the bottom here, the whole right being considered a representative of the Holy Empire. So now you understand now Rome and the connection between the Holy Roman Empire. Rome never died. Rome was transformed into the Holy Roman Empire, and that empire is still with us today. That Catholic Church and that Rome, oh, they are the largest wealth accumulator on the planet. You're going to see that a little bit later. Well, we have Ordo Abchar, this is Freemasonic, and the use of this double-headed phoenix or eagle, both phoenix and eagle, they use 33rd degree Ordo Abchar, order out of chaos. They like to create chaos, bring order out of that chaos of the masses, and bring in a new system that way. And they've done it throughout the century. This is the double-headed eagle of Rome. You see the papal keys, war and the earth, war and the earth. This is Habsburg family, a bloodline of the Roman Empire, uh, and the use of that double-headed phoenix. And on the dollar bill, uh, there is a uh, telltale sign that that phoenix always has this uh, uh, crest or these feather uh, head feathers that way. There's a little bit of that on the American Eagle as well. This is the German double-headed eagle. This is the Russian double-headed eagle. And, of course, Kanye West has the Chanel double-headed eagle. And all of the symbols that those guys use are occult symbology, referencing Rome. And that is a key connection I want you to understand. This is the Holy Roman Empire and that colonial system with all these countries involved. And you see this Knights Templar crosses everywhere. Masonic checkerboards, um, uh, mystical beings, griffins, uh, snakes, and all of that stuff. And I'm telling you, this has nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. This is Arthur Waite, who I read you that quote with. The Knights Te uh, Templar Orders uh, in Freemasonry. Uh, now you can see the reverence for the goat. The Templar orders in Freemasonry, the Knights Templar, and here is the Templar cross, and the cross and crown, which is not Christian, it's Gnosticism. Elphus Levi and his books, Tran uh, Transcendental Magic, so magic is key. Now this uh, Kabbalist uh, mysticism, uh, and you can understand that that is not the Star of David, it is an occult seal of Solomon, uh, and going even back to that, uh, but it is an occult sign. Uh, of idolatry. And you can also notice here the triple tiara which the Pope has and Rome has, Elvis Levi. Now you see this intertwining snake uh, as well. Uh, and bird. Uh, also it's, it's like a cockatrice which is half bird, half reptile. The key to the mysteries. Now you can understand what the key means uh, and we'll see the key to the mysteries uh, here. You saw that keyhole in uh, Warren Buffett's book, and now you see here that it refers indeed to the key to the mystery religions uh, and Satanism, translated by Aleister Crowley. So these guys are all interconnected.